Okay, my friends, Roger once again, and I am going to try to attempt to explain these various uh, geological formations that I, I believe is called Desert Dr uh, Drifter. And he's going around looking at all these things, and he's always saying, well, I wonder how that happened, I wonder how that happened. Well, I just took a bunch of screenshots from one of his videos, and um, and I'm going to try to explain the formation. I'm not trying to steal anything from him. He, he, he just makes a nice presentation. You should watch his video. That's nice. But all I want to do is explain these rock formations that nobody can seem to explain because they don't understand mud fossils to the degree that I do. And I'll show you, see if I'm right or wrong. But I'm just going to clip through picture after picture after picture and explain what I think I'm seeing. And what I think I'm seeing right here is biology with erosion. All right? See that? Obviously, that's biology with erosion. Now, this is, I believe, muscle sarcomeres or some kind of muscle formation. I believe that was an artery, and that was spewing out red blood to service this, this muscle. That's my take on that one. All right, this is the one that perplexed them was this, and that's, I believe, muscle or tendon. Let's go a little further and see if we can figure it out. See, that thing is huge, but see all of these little stripey looking things, and then you got the real black just running down here, and how flat it's good. Nobody came out there and chopped this thing up like that. That is a natural formation. Okay, before we like a look at those pictures, I'm going to show you what he's going to be seeing. This, they claim, is all layered, 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 layered. No. That is the creature uh, tendon part between a bone that would have been here, anchored with that little pin right there, and then the muscle would have been attached right here. That's an abrupt transition. I have the same thing in my shop, not quite this, quite this size. This says millions of years in one picture. No. However long it took for that thing to die, and then erode because muscles eroded and I mean muscles and bones eroded. Let me show you the one I have here in my shop. It is right here. Now this is the same as that only this is the whole thing showing the bone. You see the round circle of the bone. This one doesn't show the bone. This bone is over here. But it does show the layers of tissue. These are layers of muscle. That right there is an artery. These are arteries feeding vast amounts of blood into the muscle. Not here. That's the tendon. That doesn't require any blood, virtually no blood at all. Almost none. And you see the pin up here? See the pin? You see it? That's the pin in the middle of that. Now, what that did, and you can see it right here. It attaches this tendon to the muscle. So this is where the tendon is right here, and it literally glues into the muscle, uh, into the bone, or however. There's some kind of a strap-looking thing here, and it, this is tendon here. I can see his tendon. So it was like anchored to the outside. It looks like to me of a joint or whatever. I know I really, all I can tell you is this is the pin that holds this segment here from where it's anchored into where the muscle takes over. Just enough give so that you don't destroy the muscle. You see? This is, this is anchored solid. If this, this does not move from the muscle, not, I mean from the bone, not whatsoever. It's just locked in with this pin. And this goes like about this far. And then this goes like that. It starts off pr pretty tough, and out here it's just floppy. And that I, sh I can also show you, which is the um, muscle sarcomeres. You see that? These are, these are human muscle sarcomeres. And these are those little, little things here. And that's the same thing I was showing you with the desert drifter. He's looking at that big block, and it's a piece broken off like this. It's laying down there. And they have black things. The black stuff will run out of them. And that's what was running down the side. All right. There's, there's a lot of different styles of muscle in your body. 
but primarily they're made of what's called sarcomeres. And this, this is this. The red and the other, this is a, a sarcomere block right here. And these pull in, and they pull in like this, and they're attached in, in blocks. So they can pull in and pull your muscles. Now, tendons are built in a similar fashion, only they don't pull in. They just barely give. But they're made in blocks. They, they do that. They don't pull in. The muscle is loose and it contracts. Loose and contracts. That is always tight. It's under tension. It's a tendon. And you can pull it a little bit, but not much. And when you snap them, it's not good. It's not good at all. A broken Achilles tendon is not a good thing. Now, inside, you see how that, I just showed you the micro. Look at this. That's basically the same stuff. These are tendons. If you could see the little tiny breaks in here, they're so, it's just unbelievable how complicated and how many little things are in the human body. You could just never even imagine. That's just staggering when you start looking into it. Don't forget, these are fibers. And every one of those fibers is made out of these blocks. <laughs> it's, just, it's just over the top. And then you have your muscles, which are, these are the muscle sarcomeres. And here's what they look like in, in mud fossils. Here they are right there. Is it, that, that's a, a mud fossil rock. This is a surface up above here. Basically, it's probably skin. And that's this thickness here, which has a little bit of blood, and it's just sort of... But down here is your muscle. This is all blood. All blood in here. And you need a ton of blood to run your muscles. You don't have a lot of muscle, a lot of blood, your muscle doesn't work. And here's... That's this. This is a, another shot of basically the same sort of stuff. Now, I don't know what these white layers are doing in here, i got to be honest with you. But I, I imagine they're connective tissues. They, they're, they're well patterned. I, yeah, they got to be connective tissues. Because you, your muscle doesn't do, doesn't do all the job. You got to be connected in there. The muscle can pull. But you still have to have connective tissue that holds you, your arms back to your bones and so forth. That's what that is, connective tissue. Mystery solved. All right, remember you saw those little black spots here and there? This is a chunk of muscle sarcomeres, it looks like to me, and all these little bands in there, and the black is just running down. That's all. All right, this just basically shows we're dealing with a huge, enormous creature. These are layers of tissue, whatever it is, I do not know. But I'm just showing you there's huge, huge things. Look, this is also tissue. And I'm not sure what it's from, but it looks to me like these are sarcomeres. That's what I'm taking from that. Muscle is very muscle erodes a lot, but it's all striped and. Uh, but it's it's, it's pretty. Whoops! It's whoops! I made a mistake there. It's pretty bloody. Now here he is up on the side of it. You see these colors? That's blood. He's looking at it and thinking, wow, what made these patterns? Uh, where did I go? And here's the, here it is again. Now, that's that black stuff running down. That is Fe2O2 blood. See this black bubble that coming running down here? This is the muscle here, the reddish stuff. But the black blood is running down. And I showed you before in those muscle shots, there's chunks of black here and there. I don't know why, but that's what's coming down here. And they break off as a sarcomere. That's just what I showed you before. Uh, let's get rid of that one. Here's the same thing again. This is, and we're right up close to it. You can see this is sort of dribbling down, but this is where the muscle and connective tissue are. Same thing again, he's right up next to it. And here it is, tipped to the side. 
it's, it's broken off from up above. You can see when we come up there, but look at how square it is. And that's what those sarcomeres are. There's, oops, wrong place. Wrong place. Here we go. And they're, they got their little cleats in there. But this is all, that's um, little spots of blood and so forth. Whoops, here he is climbing up there. That's kind of crazy. But it's nice, see, I can at least see some of these things up close. You see that? That's nothing but biology. And this is, a, that's an abrupt transition. Something here changed and went into these little balls and red spots and all these little fibers down there. That's, it's, a, it's an abrupt transition, changed. Look at that. That's as, that's as much biology as you can possibly get. And that's mosses and so forth growing on the blood. It's not just a rock that has no biology to it. Here, you see? They're coming off from way up above there. They're breaking down. Well, look at the size of that thing. The Earth is... 100% biology. The universe is 100% biology, as far as I can determine. Now, see, they're way up here. They're falling, breaking off there and falling down. Now, this is nothing more than a layer of tendon. That's just one little layer of tendon. And, and us, you could see through that. Whoops, oh, I did it again. Uh, here we go. Look at that sucker. Yikes. Here's colors of blood right there. That's where it pasted together to the next block. You see, there they are right up there. That's that whole layer. It's a, it's a layer of um, this tendon of some sort. So I, that's my take on it. It's a, it's a layer of tissue, and I say it's tendon. Below it is erodible stuff which is fleshy stuff and again you usually have a little at least a certain distance of tendon that that gives you that oomph now above that maybe was muscle i don't know je ne sais pas i do not know but you see up here This is all biology. I don't care how you look at it. It's all biology. Now, what after this layer, I'm not sure. What was above that, I don't know. But these things, the earth is literally a corpse. Look at that. That's what the, they were down in here somewhere. But this is the stuff. Look. That's where it came from. And this is a layer of tissue. Now, I'd have to really start studying this close, but you, you're going to have a layer of a certain type of tissue, which is going to be, like say, the fascia that surrounds it, and then you're going to have a membrane, and then you're going to have the fluid-filled hyoid, and then you're going to have this and that. It depends on where it is in your body, how many different layers you have, and how thick, and do they attach to something? Do they hold that against the, the body cavity or something? There's a lot to look at here, but there's, there's no question this is biology. That just didn't happen by accident. That's insanity. And they, they'll fight you tooth and nail about that. They won't even look at it. Like, oh, you're a crazy guy. Well, maybe I am. Look at that. That's blood. The red and the black. That's, and you don't have much in attendance. You have almost none. That's why you don't see that. You don't, if this was regular tissue, you'd have red and black all over the place. But you can see all the layers. And the blocks are the sarcomeres. Again, very, very large creatures. You see all these layers? That didn't happen because it rained and this and that and the other thing. That's a blood vessel right there. That's an artery. That's, that's blood. 
These are the, the, the colors of blood right there. Look at the size of this stuff. And this is layers of tissue. Now, above that, it could have been muscle and stuff. These creatures were just enormous. Uh, Devil's Tower is only an Achilles tendon. That's all it is, is the, 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 from the bottom of the foot coming up to halfway up your ankle, the Achilles tendon. That's all that the Devil's Tower is. It's not a whole foot. It's an Achilles tendon. Right. Nobody has an idea of how big things were. Look at this. Now they're going in through some of this. Now that these are probably tight junctions that were in the body of the creature. But look, all right, this is perfect. This is the it doesn't get any better than this. Look at these blocks. Now, again, those are a, a layer of separation. In my mind, that is the, the interface, which is an abrupt transition, between whatever's down here. And you'd have to come and do some soil sampling and so forth, and then figure out what this is made of, and then see if you can find some runoff up here that hasn't run off yet, you know, something that wouldn't run off, like up the hill. I think this is muscle up here, and this thing would have been, I don't know how many miles tall. No idea. At this point, it's just a guessing game, but as far as I'm concerned, the Earth is literally a corpse, and this is literally biology, and the things that were written in the ancient texts are quite likely have a lot of substance in them. Nobody came out and carved these here and just plopped them up on a hill. This is biology, my friends. Biology. All right, so I'm going to leave it at that. Sooner or later, the world is going to catch on to reality. I hope I live long enough because I tell you, the minds are so fixed. And so, so locked as to not even open them to examine and then discuss. There is no examination. I, 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 well, let me put it this way. If there is, and this is their conclusion, is that this is just nothing, it's just rocks laying around, then there's an issue with that person's mind. I'm trying not, not to be nasty. I'm not being nasty at all. I'm just saying that they, they, they're... It's what's called menticide. They're so brainwashed that they, they can't even think for themselves anymore. And that, I get this all day long. Oh, that's not peer-reviewed. I say, so what? What do you think of it? Well, I don't think anything of it because it's not peer-reviewed. I say, you're kidding me. He says, no, this means nothing to you? No. Nope. <laughs> I am not kidding you. It's that blunt. And, and then, well, you know, I can understand it. They probably paid, I don't know how many tens of thousands of dollars to these guys so that they have to say what they told them to say. Now, that would, I'd feel pretty silly, you know, having to repeat all that stuff after they said, I'm just saying, no, 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 I'm protecting my place. I don't know what I'd do. I really don't know what I'd do. If I spent all kind of money and found out I was just hoodwinked, I mean, basically, they know this isn't true anymore, that this is just some kind of a natural, everything they, say, they always say it's just something to do with lava. <laughs> anyway, let's just close it up at that. But um, we got a lot of stuff to do. And again, this all leads to our ancient mythology and ancient, like, religious sort of stuff. I don't pick up any one religion, but there's everybody, every culture had them. It's not one that doesn't have one. You name me one, one place in the entire world that doesn't have a religion. It doesn't happen. So, as far as I'm concerned, there's something to do there. What it is, I'm not 100% sure. I have my feelings right now. And I have my leanings towards what I lean towards. And um, the rest is up to you. So, we will be getting deep into those texts and um, seeing what physically supports it. And this is stuff that Enoch said. Everything supports that easily. Easily. 
And when he said they were 3,000 L's tall, that's two and a half miles. That is not out of the question whatsoever. In us, this is microscopic. I showed you the size of the things in us. That are those blocks. You see those blocks? I see these blocks. This is this is a about as magnified as you can possibly get electron microscope. You see the different colors? That means they're different transition metals within those different fibers. That gives them dish, different tensile strengths. The, the body is so absolutely fabulously engineered. And I, I don't think a lot of the, uh, the bio, biologists and uh, anatomists know this. When you can get as deep into this stuff as I am, you see things you can't, can't see. I mean, I can, well, you've seen the stuff I showed, if you, if you watch the one on Atlantis. Oh, right here. It's identical to that. Not only that, this is also identical right here. And that's the eye of the universe, the eye of God, it's called. Something like that. Look at that. And if you can't tell me, or if you tell me that is not, what you're seeing here. Then once again, you got a problem with what you're looking at. You, that's not my issue. Look at the black roundness, look at all these little fibers, and then look at all that. That's how, that's how your eyeball works. And this one here has identical, not close, it's identical. And this is not something that's CGI or any of that nonsense. This was these are taken from the Hubble Space Telescope. They have a ton of them looking at it, showing different highlights of this and that, but they're all basically these colors. These, you know, when you say colors, that means the, the, the frequency that's coming at you relates to these different colors, these frequencies. So why is it emitting light, first of all, in these different frequencies? That's a good question. Well, thank you, Roger. You're welcome. I don't know. All of this stuff needs to be examined in so much detail. It's just unbelievable. And I like to get into the details. You know, how does this thing work? What about all this little optic nerve stuff? And I, I showed all about uh, um, Atlantis. There's more to this whole story than we have been told, my friends, and it, it's just, uh, it's, it's hard to believe, but see, this is Plato. He established an academy in 387 B.C., but they, they didn't give out diplomas, none of that stuff. They sat around and they discussed. All right, that was Plato. And then... Emanuel Velikowski, a controversial figure, unconventional, pseudoscientist, da 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 His ideas sparked considerable debate and criticism from scientists as they were seen as lacking rigorous empirical support. Many regard his work as pseudoscience, and they still do. And I have all the evidence to support my excellent friend Velikowski. And this is about the moral of Plato's allegory, the cave. It's, they're, they're locked in a cave, and all they can see is what is shadows and things. When a guy gets out of the cave, and he comes back, he says, holy smokes, this is da, 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 da. and they, they hated him for coming back and telling him the truth of what was really out there. And that's just what it is. That's the way it works. So overall, the allegory encourages critical thinking, the pursuit of knowledge, and the recognition that reality is often more complex than it appears. Yes. And they will hate you for bringing, bringing it forward. Ignorance versus knowledge. The journey of the prisoner who escapes the cave represents the philosopher's quest for knowledge. He wants to understand knowledge and truth. It emphasizes the struggle to move from ignorance to enlightenment. Yeah, it's a struggle because you're fighting against education. The allegory underscores the importance of education in achieving understanding. Not education. Education is dictation. It's indoctrination. 
education is not what you want. It's not what you want. You want discussion. You want openness. You want to arrive at some kind of a, a consensus for you. It may not be the same consensus for you as it is for me when it's a theoretical realm. But when it's a hard science, and I say that's a bone, and it's been transformed in this particular way through nucleophilic substitution and invasion, and that is feldspar and it's silicon dioxide, aluminum silicates, and it, and, and that, now that's a whole different story. But when you get into to you know um, something that's not material, it's a theoretical realms where you say, well, if this is this and this is, then it must be this. No, there's no must be anything. You have to say, here's why it is what it is. All right, so that's another thing. I see the last one, and I'm going to wrap it up now. Now, here, here's this was with Plato well received in his lifetime. Nobody ever is. Plato was not universally well received during his lifetime. Well, he had some followers and admirers, particularly among the aristocracy and intellectuals in Athens. Well, that doesn't happen anymore. They want nothing to do with this because it overthrows everything they've been thinking of. He also faced criticism, opposition. The philosophers and others who valued rhetoric and, pra and practical knowledge often challenged Plato's ideas, especially his views on forms and ideals. Now, that's, he had, he had uh, theoretical ideas which were different than everybody else's too. But he also had stuff that was real and solid and they, they dismissed him because of his other views. Now, I have everything I have is real and solid, including my giants and dragons and everything else. So I'm dismissed out of hand because of that, even though I still have the evidence. He didn't have the evidence, so he was dismissed. In a, lot, in a lot of areas like politics and rhetoric, you know, this just sort of general theories about life in general. They they didn't like his theories. All right, so he's but he's finally established an academy despite the challenges. Plato's establishment of the academy, 387 B.C., marked a significant contribution to education and philosophy. Now, when they say education, once again, it's discussion. It attracted students and thinkers overall while he had a significant impact on Western thought and garnered respect over time. His ideas were contentious and not always embraced during his life. They probably spit on him. If he went out there and he, he started his own academy, which he did, and I, and I looked it up about it, about it, there was no diplomas, there was nothing. They sat around and they discussed and they, they, they experimented. They did all the things of a, a scientist should do, and he engaged in, in thought, not in taking a position. I, I own this position, and I'm smarter than everybody else. Well, that's good. If, you, if it's right, that's fine. But at least discuss it with somebody. You know, if somebody else has a different opinion, you discuss it. I, I discuss it with somebody else. You show me what your stuff. I should, you show me yours, I'll show you mine. That's all. That's what I've been trying to do. And I have been showing mine over and over and over and over and over and over and over. So, all I can say is until academia changes, we are subservient and there will be no truth. There is no truth and there will be no eternity for the ones that acquiesce to this kind of you know, dictation that you should believe this, and if you don't believe it, we're not going to give you a piece of paper. Which is your everybody says, Oh, you got to go to school, you got to go to college, you got to do this. Not really. I would say a trade is much more, uh, you know, much better now. Once you have a trade and you can do something, you can fix something, you can build something, you can analyze something, you can work with your hands. Um, or you have some material abilities, totally different than just archaeology and space and astrophysics and all that. Even physics, all the physics, that's not, not even right. No, it's near right. Dipole electron flood theory is the only thing that works. And that's also been rejected 
in the same way as anything else that comes to light. It's like Plato said. Even Max Planck said, science advances one funeral at a time. The guy that's in charge, he owns it. Until he's gone, he owns it. All right, I love you all. Think for yourself.